Testament it is absolutely crazy. Welcome to uh, Glasgow. Is there any better way of finishing a year than visiting the biggest derby in Europe? I don't think so. Hi everyone, a warm welcome to HFE if you're new and welcome back if you've been around for a while. We're in Glasgow, Scotland for Celtic against Rangers for the fourth time in this channel's life. A derby which is called Old Firm by the Rangers fans, but that's a forbidden term around Celtic supporters who prefer calling this game Glasgow Derby. More about this later. The 21st round of the Scottish Premiership, these sides face each other four times each season in the league. Three times in the regular season and once post split in the Championship round, this will be their second meeting in a 23-24 season. Celtic leading the league, Rangers five points behind them, but the team in significantly better form is Rangers. They have two games in hand, meaning if they don't lose today and win those two, they are top of the league. Their win in Sevilla against Real Betis means they find themselves in the last 16 of the Europa League now as group winners, whilst Celtic, despite beating Feyenoord, finished last in their Champions League group. In the last 10 head-to-head -head comparison, which I always do before significant games, the arrows point towards Celtic. Six wins for the hoops, two draws with Rangers leaving the pitch as winners on two occasions. When do you think was the last time when the Scottish champion was neither Celtic nor Rangers? Locals know Obviously, I'll give you a few seconds. Well, it was last year. No, no, it was in 1985 when Aberdeen won their fourth title. It's pretty easy to understand why this is not going to change in the near future when looking at these market value statistics about the league on transfermarkt.com. These two squads, Celtic and Rangers combined, have 70% of the league's total market value. Quick disclaimer, I'm not being sponsored by this page, by the way, I just use screenshots from their page always because I find them useful for my videos. After all these statistics, time to dig a bit deeper. We are going to talk about the following topics. The Derby's name, the situation of the away supporters and the Green Brigade, and why this Derby is way more than just the game on the pitch. These are very, very incredibly sensitive topics to the locals, just so you know. It's not like stories, it's identity, history, religion, culture, matter of life and death, and I'm not exaggerating. Starting with the name of this Derby, which is historically old firm, it is called like that by Rangers and the media. The reason why the Celtic supporters call it Glasgow Derby instead of old firm is Rangers' insolvency. In 2012, the public limited company which was running Rangers Football Club entered liquidation. But another company named Sefco Scotland Limited stepped in to save the club. The assets of the PLC, including the operation of Rangers Football Club, were transferred to Sefco Scotland Limited, which got renamed to the Rangers Football Club Limited. Now we are obviously talking about the same colors, same stadium, same supporters, but since it's a different company running the club, Rangers were pronounced dead by Celtic supporters. After this takeover, Rangers were downgraded to the fourth tier of Scottish football and started climbing the leagues, returning to the Scottish Premiership, the top flight in 2016. However, Celtic supporters say that only the pre-2012 Rangers have the right to use the name Old Firm, so it can't be called like that anymore. Hence, Glasgow Derby for them. They say Rangers died in 2012. They say the current Rangers is a new club not having all those titles you see on screen. Only the titles they won since 2012, which is one Premiership, one Scottish Cup and one Scottish League Cup. The happenings mentioned above are the reason why you would hear Celtic fans mocking Rangers by the following names. The Zombies, Sefco Rangers, Rangers 2012. But that's about it. Briefly, on to the next topic, which is away supporters. There will be no away supporters in today's game because of security reasons. It's been like that every now and then recently. Some of the supporters hate each other so much that basically the personal safety of the away supporters wouldn't be able to be guaranteed with beer caps being thrown over to the away section, like vice versa, obviously the away section back as well. Peeing in a beer cup and throwing that over, imagine that coins throwing down like things like this happened in this derby. Many injuries and violence inside stadiums because of this hatred so the only proper derby in terms of supporters is the one in the cup when they face each other at the national stadium Hampden Park. There's another aspect to this however this derby used to have 7,000 8,000 away supporters up until 2018. In 2018 Rangers announced that they will cut the away supporter allocation to 10% of the previous number, which is 700, 800 people. As a reaction to it, Celtic did the same, and I really have to emphasize that it takes the point of a derby away, which is two-sided support. But there is not too much to do about this, really. This rivalry has been really unhealthy in recent years, to use the words of a local. I was lucky to take part at three Celtic Rangers games before, all in 2022. One of them was in Celtic Park without away supporters, one of them was a 50-50 split at Hamden, 
and one of them had 800 away fans, Rangers fans. And I made their videos like this one as well. Of course, if you're interested, link one, two, and three respectively down in the description box. About the Green Brigade, Celtics radical ultra group, they were banned from the stadium for their active political stance in October. The majority of Celtic supporters are left-wing, by the way, openly anti-fascist identity. You would also see a lot of Ireland and Palestine flags on the stands. Just for the record, this channel is not engaging politically. I'm here to introduce the culture, the different aspects of it, but I'm not contributing to it by sharing personal opinion. The reason why the Green Brigade was banned were Palestine flags, but now they are allowed again since Celtic's last home game, and they'll be there today as well, contributing to the atmosphere. Many foreigners who managed to get a ticket for this derby are blown away by the sick atmosphere, but they know little about the reason behind it. I flew over from Hungary to this game in February 2022 exactly like that with a tiny fraction of my current knowledge. A bit about the history of things now, a bit more from Celtic point of view because I'm more experienced in that part. The atmosphere you experience in a Celtic Rangers game is like this, is this fears because of historical traumas and hatred. In this type, what Celtic originally represents are people of Irish descent, historically Catholics. What Rangers represents are the British Unionists, historically Protestant. It's important to emphasize that not every supporter is there at the game to manifest their historical identity, but to enjoy the game, support the team, connect with family and friends. This is the moderate aspect, which is here as well, obviously. At the same time, to understand the meaning of the chants and songs inside the stadium, we need to talk about these topics. What about the Irish flags, the four-leaf clover, or Celtic Irish then. Yes, they are. And they're Scottish as well. The reason behind the club's foundation is the Irish potato famine between 1845 and 1852. However, the Celtic supporters don't use the term famine, they use the term hunger, the great hunger. It caused the death of millions, the emigration of millions in the mid-19th century. That's why, for instance, you have Irish pubs all over the world, huge diaspora. When emigrating, the ones who could leave the country but were not able to afford the transatlantic travel to America emigrated to nearby Scotland from Ireland, including 15-year-old Andrew Cairns, who later became a Marist, known as Brother Wolfrid, the founder of Celtic Football Club in 1887. The purpose of establishing Celtic was to help feeding the starving children in the east end of Glasgow. Now, there's a lot more to tell. I could translate my whole thesis for you. I wrote it about Celtic, but it doesn't really fit in the video. The main thing, Celtic Football Club are the number one symbol of the Irish diaspora worldwide. At this point, you probably guessed I'm not really neutral in this tie. There are certain clubs I fell in love with since starting this channel in 2021, one of them is Celtic. The analysis of the game is neutral, that's not a problem usually, but I do support today and I support Celtic. It's incredibly hard to get a ticket for a Celtic Rangers game. It's not a coincidence I didn't manage to since May 2022. Until now, of course. There are a couple other Celtic games on the channel as well. Feel free to check out the Celtic playlist link number four in the description. This time a Celtic supporter reached out to me and offered me a ticket after seeing my previous content about the club. This great man doesn't go to the game because his son is unable to attend due to disability and sensory issues. They are hoping to attend together in the future, but until then he offers his seat to people and this time I got the honor. The Celtic FC Foundation, which is carrying on the original mission of founder brother Wolfrid, opened their sensory room in April 2019. It makes the Celtic experience possible for children with disabilities, which is a crucially important aspect. It just shows the emphasis the club's foundation is placing on being a club for all, like Celtic is aiming to be. Please read more about the Lions View Sensory Room and the foundation's work via link 5 in the description. Always an honor to visit Celtic, and especially for a derby, and I really hope I can do this gift just with this match documentary. Nicknamed Paradise, our venue today is one of the loudest stadiums in Europe, Celtic Park. Time to go. <laughs> Not exactly the warmest welcome for the away players.
Turns out a fellow YouTuber is sitting next to me. Blair, really nice to meet you in person. Link to his channel in the description. I think it's gonna be like link six. So you yourself support Partick Thyssen in Glasgow. What do you think about today's game? Do Celtic stand any chance in the current circumstances? I'm just here to promote Scottish football. Scottish football fans have passion, it's just different. I've just been to Ibrox here with the Rangers fans, I've came here as well. And honestly, Scottish football, nobody compares to them. It is absolutely crazy. And a game like today, with everything at stake, you're going to see something, obviously you've seen it before, but nobody compares, nobody comes close. And with a fight out Celtic Park, wow, I'm excited for this one. Have you been to any other games which comes? close to this in terms of atmosphere. I've been to loads of games but every time I just come home to Scotland I'm a Glasgow boy myself and nothing beats it. The, the passion, the build up. I mean see for a Celtic versus Rangers game it's not one day build up, it builds up for at least two or three weeks. The match day, everybody, even if you're not a football fan, you know it is old fun day. It's crazy. Score prediction quickly for today. Full house Celtic. I can see 2-1 Celtic, it's going to be a close one, Rangers are in good form, but I think Celtic are definitely going to take it, 100%. You'll never walk alone, always goosebumps. It's the best at Celtic Park. It's a pleasure to be here. The game is on the way between Celtic and Rangers.
25th minute, there's the lead for Santis. Corner, Paolo Bernardo after the corner. The limbs were there, it's amazing. I haven't seen this from this close in, this close to the pitch. It's just an amazing view. Really sentimental as well, I must say. And look at what effect it will have on the atmosphere now. the very first thing I noticed when I came to Celtic for the first time in February 2022 that they shout at the corner like another team another supporter base for a goal it's just mental <laughs> Dessers just missed a 100% chance Referee already blew his whistle. We are over the two minutes of additional time. There it is. And on the first half, Celtic lead after a goal by Paolo Bernardo. Fierce contest on the pitch, quick pace, just as usual at the Celtic Rangers. The atmosphere is not the best I've seen in Celtic Park at the Derby, but it's all right. It, it lives up to the expectation. It's not extraordinary, but Celtic scored a goal and after that obviously it kept going. So the green and white hoops are in the lead since about the middle of the first half. And they deserved it because uh, they wanted it more. They stepped up a bit more during this first half in front of their home crowd, even though Rangers had some decent chances as well. It's going to be tough for Celtic to keep this lead in the second half. However, the crowd, as always at the home derby, is behind them. They'll try to push their team through to the victory today but one goes on insurance not for anything especially not in a derby like this let's start the second half hoping for an at least as enjoyable contest as the first half was second half on the way by the boys by Kyogo to the top right oh my days beginning of the second half Celtic double their lead 2-0 Huddle is here slowly, everyone will turn around, look at that.
Rangers end of the 71st minute professional foul last minute it was a clear thing after the Celtic player run one on one against the keeper First minute, Celtic two goals up, the crowd cheering every single pass. James Tavernier, the Rangers captain, does it again. What a screamer, what a stunner free kick to get Rangers back in the game for these last minutes. It's absolutely brilliant. What a technique that was. Tense last minutes. His first free kick went to the wall, but not this time. Here comes Celtic. Well, furious, no penalty because it was offside. Otherwise, it probably would have been. Eventually, but it means the world for these supporters. Celtic lead by 8 points now and despite having 2 games more than Rangers, this still gives them a bit of a breathing room and a fresh start to the new year. I felt Celtic should have rubbed it all up after the sending off, instead of that we got some really tense last minutes with 8 minutes added on. Since being a derby, I really really miss the TIFO, the no pyro part I can understand because of that new code of conduct the Green Brigade agreed with the club. But regardless of that, as always, a pleasure and honor to visit the derby in Glasgow, who knows when I'm gonna get the chance again. That adrenaline, the energy 
energy of the crowd, it's really addictive, the whole experience. I doubt you would experience this or this sort of thing anywhere else in Europe. If you're up for more, don't forget to check out the Celtic and the Scotland playlists on the channel. And if you're satisfied with the content you saw, join me on the channel's social media. You can see all possibilities on screen. This video was released a bit later than planned, so it's just suitable to wish all of you a hoopy new year. I was HFV, hoping to see you around on the channel in the near future. Take care, bye.